Good evening. Thank you for joining us for our eighth Florida Keys Mosquito Control District OxyTech Public Educational Webinar. We've adjusted our community engagement with COVID and have been hosting these webinars since the summer. Our first webinar had well over 100 attendees. Um, we're pleased that tonight, uh, this is our second best attended webinar. Many of you have registered and, and logged in and we appreciate your interest and we're really excited about tonight's presentation too. We're going to be showing you a virtual tour inside OxyTech Labs in three countries. Panelists with us tonight include Andrea Leal, the Executive Director of the FKMCD. I'm Meredith Fensom, a Florida native and OxyTech's Head of Public Affairs. We have Kevin Gorman, OxyTech's Head of Field Operations, and Angela pickle Herc, OxyTech's Head of Quality Programs. We are hosting this series of public educational webinars to share information with residents of the Florida Keys and provide forums to answer questions. All webinars are open to everyone. All webinars are recorded and made available for everyone after the event. All questions will be answered. We may group similar questions together. And if time runs out, we will accept questions in writing via Florida at oxytech.com. Questions and answers will be published in writing after the event with links to external resources. We also want to draw your attention to our upcoming webinars. In December, we will host What's in the Box? How Oxytech's Just Add Water Technology Helps Control the Aedes aegypti Population. In January, um, we'll host a webinar about preparing for our, our pilot project, and we'll give an overview of the field trial design and management. Um, and then in February, we'll have a roundtable discussion, controlling the Aedes aegypti, the vector of dengue, Zika, heartworm, and other diseases. We also invite you all to visit our website, uh, keysmosquitoproject.com, and you can find information there about our webinars, other resources, and, and you can register. So our agenda for this evening. Um, the first thing we'll talk about are our winners. For the last week, we conducted a campaign in the Florida Keys where residents could vote on their favorite uh, design for our mosquito box label. And, and we know who the two winners are now, and believe it or not, they're already going into production this Friday um, for our project, which is expected to begin in the spring. We'll also show some pictures of the behind the scenes um, filming for this virtual tour uh, for our facilities in England, Brazil, and in Marathon. We'll then show the tour, and we'll talk about some of our upcoming community engagement and then we'll leave the last half of the webinar for, for Q&A. I should have said earlier, um, for the questions, we are not going to identify who is asking the questions. We want people to feel very comfortable to ask anything at all they are curious about. So please um, submit your questions and we will not identify who, who has asked them, but we will answer them. So we really uh, uh, appreciate all of the interest and enthusiasm around this, this, this vote uh, for the favorite mosquito box. It's actually the top two boxes that are going to go into production for the project. But we were starting to design these labels in-house, and we decided that we should ask Florida Keys residents um, what they wanted. And we had a lot of different options of designs. Uh, and also colors. We had pink and purple and orange. Um, but in the end, the, the top two winners were both different shades of, of sea green. We have geometric sea green and in-flight sea green. Um, and we have on the slide the, the percentage of, of the votes they received. Um, so these were the two winners of our top 12 contenders. And we'll go into a little bit more detail in, in next month's webinar about uh, how these boxes work. 
Uh, we put we put our mosquito eggs in them, a little bit of, of food, and we add water. And in about a week's time, our friendly, non-biting uh, male mosquitoes release themselves. Um, but more detail on that next month. So this is just a map of the world um, showing where, where we filmed for this virtual tour. Um, it, was, it was quite a project to uh, undertake filming in, in three countries, but these are the places that, that we're operating and, and we wanted you to see everything that we're doing. These are some behind the scenes pictures from the filming um, in the top, or, top, top left corner. Uh, that that's Ben Sperry, who uh, works with us. He's already he's already moved to the Florida Keys, working with with OxyTech, um, and and he's doing a number of things for us there. And in, in this picture, he's leading some of our community engagement efforts. Below that picture, we have photographs from both um, Brazil and England from the filming there. And then on the right side is, is all the Brazil filming. Um, there's a lot to capture because we have another project, a bigger one, uh, ongoing there now. It's the beginning of their mosquito season. Um, so we do have our vans out and we have our, our boxes up in, um, in Brazil. And now our presentation is going to go away for a minute and you won't see our faces and the virtual tour is going to come on. So enjoy the movie and stay with and us. Stay with, stay with, stay with. with over a billion mosquitoes deployed worldwide, Oxitec is truly a global organization working to improve lives and livelihoods around the world. And with our latest project set to launch in the Florida Keys in 2021, we invite you on a tour of Oxitec's facilities in three countries. Our first stop is England, where Oxitec's story began in 2002 as a spin-out from Oxford University. This is where we operate our headquarters and develop biological solutions to safely and sustainably control insect pests that spread disease and damage crops. Our facilities may look unassuming from the outside, but step inside to find our state-of-the-art innovation center and lab facilities where Oxitec's team members, representing 15 nationalities, develop Oxitec's technology. Strict access control is implemented for all areas. Wearing lab coats, lab shoes, and gloves is imperative. Once these measures have been followed and you enter through different sets of closed doors, you will be immediately struck by the change of temperature. Far from the chilly England weather, you will find conditions perfect for a mosquito. Rooms like this one, one of our mosquito insectaries, are kept at high humidity and warm temperatures, allowing our mosquitoes to live a long time and enabling us to rear them through every life stage, from eggs to larvae to adults. While our strain of Aedes aegypti has already been developed and is successfully controlling populations elsewhere, our UK lab is busily applying this technology to other strains of mosquitoes and crop pests. What you can see here is a cage of wild type Anopheles, a type of mosquito that can spread malaria. We are developing new mosquitoes to fight malaria transmitting mosquitoes like these. We feed them so that they will lay their eggs, which we then use to make the self-limiting strains that we use at Oxitec. We take eggs which are less than an hour old and bring them to our next stop, the injection lab. This is where we take the DNA that contains our self-limiting and fluorescent marker genes and inject it into the eggs. Our scientists line up the eggs on the paper that will go under the microscope, ready for the injections. We make the micro needles that are necessary to inject the tiny eggs, add the DNA mix to the needle, and use this injection machine to apply pressure and put a tiny bubble of DNA mix into each egg until every single egg is injected. We then carefully look after them for the next four or five days until they hatch into larvae, what we call the injection survivors. In the next generation, we can screen them already for fluorescence. We then monitor the offspring, looking for the fluorescent marker 
that causes the larvae to glow bright red under a fluorescent light. And when we find those, we'll establish a strain, and then we'll test them to see if our self-limiting trait is working properly. When the strain is ready, the eggs are shipped to the location where they will be deployed. We have been successfully releasing our friendly mosquitoes in Brazil since 2009, with projects in several areas reducing the invasive mosquito population by up to 95% compared to the control areas that were not treated with our mosquitoes. Our large state-of-the-art facility, based in Campinas, was set up in 2016 to accommodate Oxitex R&D programs, field deployment, and field monitoring of Oxitex friendly mosquitoes. After four years, we expanded our operations to include insect rearing, quality control, field deployment, and field monitoring for both mosquitoes and our new agricultural pest solutions. We also maintain a collection of wild-type insects to serve our R&D and field activities. For today's tour, we'll start at the antechamber for proper PPE wearing. Much like our UK base, our labs operate under strict health and safety conditions, and all the staff are trained under the Brazilian Biosafety Law to be able to perform the activity safely and compliantly. The lab is a restricted environment, and every tour needs a guide who has received extensive biosafety training. In Brazil, we have the same insect rearing processes and product development programs found in the UK for Aedes aegypti mosquitoes and our agricultural pest solutions. The projects start in the UK for strain generation and proof of concept, and once the new strain and its processes are ready to go to the field, the technology transfer process starts. Once in Brazil, there is an optimization for the local conditions and validation involving producing exit scale, larval rearing, monitoring adults, and finally putting the eggs in the boxes ready for the field deployment when our safe, non-biting insects go into the real world. The eggs in boxes are activated in the field with our Just Add Water technology, and they grow into male-only adults and mate with invasive females the female offspring of these encounters cannot survive. Our field deployment team leads public engagement, installs traps and boxes in the municipalities, and collects samples on a weekly basis to be analyzed in the field monitoring lab to make sure we are providing excellent control of the invasive mosquitoes. The lab is set up to process all of the collections from the field, eggs, and adults. Both parts of the facility are separated to make sure no wild mosquitoes collected from the field can get into the production colony. The data is generated and sent to the UK office for reporting, and then full reports are produced in a team effort with Brazil and UK experts for submission to regulatory agencies for approvals. And now we are at the final stages of bringing our technology to the Florida Keys. The Florida Keys Mosquito Control District, FKMCD, invited Oxitec to the Keys almost 10 years ago, and now we are ready to begin. In 2016, there was a non-bonding referendum in Monroe County, Florida, and our mosquitoes were on the ballot. This referendum, an exciting first for any vector control technology, showed just how much support our project has, with 31 out of 33 precincts voting in favor of using our technology. Our Florida operation will have a dedicated full-time staff working on the project from our lab in Marathon, housed within the same building as FKMCD, allowing us to work hand-in-hand -hand with our FKMCD collaborators. We will prepare the boxes in this lab before we deploy them in the field. The deployment process wouldn't be possible without the support of the local community which is why we've been engaging in the Florida Keys for the better part of a decade, including in-person events, town halls, and public meetings. We get questions about how the technology works and whether it will have impacts on other species. Many Keys residents appreciate that this targeted technology is an environmentally friendly approach and does not harm beneficial insects like bees or butterflies. Community members who volunteer to be hosts will receive a simple, safe, and durable box like this that will stay in their yard for the duration of the project. Oxitex non-biting male mosquitoes will start to emerge from the box after about a week. An operator will then visit the box periodically, 
to switch out disposable liners and ensure everything is working well. We will also have the community volunteers who host traps like this one which catch mosquito eggs and adult mosquitoes. These traps will be visited weekly to collect the captured insects. Catches from traps in the field will be evaluated in this lab, including looking for the fluorescent marker that distinguishes our mosquitoes from the invasive mosquitoes already in the Keys. Everything we do at Oxitec is centered on trust and scientific excellence. No matter where we operate, we work closely with government partners like the FKMCD, and we develop strong, lasting, and genuine relationships with local communities. To keep the local community up to date about our activities, we are on the radio most weeks, join community organizations for virtual meetings, have open monthly webinars on all aspects of our Florida Keys project and our technology, have set up a project website, keysmosquitoproject.com, and are doing some door-to-door -door visits to give Florida Keys residents an opportunity to ask questions and have their questions answered. Thank you for joining us on this virtual tour of Oxitex Labs. If you have any questions, please feel free to send us an email at florida at oxitec.com or visit keysmosquitoproject.com. Hello. We hope everyone enjoyed the virtual tour. Welcome back, Andrea and Angela. I'll move to our next slide. Uh, Kevin is in Brazil right now, and he may be having some connectivity issues. So if he cannot join us, I will, um, I'll walk us through the slide, but um, these pictures were taken this week in Indiatuba, and we've just launched an expanded project there. It's our third season of collaboration with the city, um, and, and our devices are a little bit different now. These are the same boxes we'll be using in the Keys, and we have a strong collaboration there with, with the city officials and with their vector control agency. Um, so we started yesterday and our project there will run through June. That's the full mosquito season in Brazil. Um, talking to the team this week, it, it was interesting. These little boxes that, that in this case, we're not using people's houses, we're using uh, utility poles in the city. It takes just about uh, two minutes to install them. And then we add water and they're ready to go. This van on the left-hand side is, is one of ours. And in, in Diatuba, they are calling our mosquitoes um, the heroes. So this slide is just to raise a bit of awareness about what will be coming next in the Florida Keys. Um, you all have seen pictures of the boxes that we will be using, and that's an important component of, of the project. That's how our mosquitoes are released. And um, we've already started surveys in the Keys, but we're also going to begin um, a process where people in the Keys who are interested can sign up to host either a mosquito box or a trap. Um, I was in the Keys last week. We had a lot of meetings and presentations, and a question that we received often was, what do I have to do to get a box in my yard? So we, we did want to create a, a process where people could sign up, um, but we also want to make clear that um, if, if someone signs up, but if we don't end up working in that area, um, you know, we won't be able to accommodate a request for a box, but we want to try to accommodate as many requests as possible. And Andrea, would, would you like to um, perhaps add here about not just the mosquito boxes, but, es but especially the trap, because that's a really important part of, of our project, and we will need people to host those too. Sure. Yeah. So um, I think the big thing is just really we're working hard on site selection currently. 
Um, one of the questions we get quite frequently is, have we selected a site? Do we know where the trial or the pilot project is going to be occurring? Um, and as of right now, we don't, um, but we're looking at a lot of different factors, one of which is uh, the population of Aedes aegypti in those areas. Um, and to really figure out what where those populations are, we utilize traps quite frequently. And as Meredith was saying, traps are going to be a very big part of the pilot project itself. Um, we're going to be deploying um, a number of these traps to collect mosquitoes, and we'll be needing to have those in, in people's yards. Um, one of the good things is, you know, it, it gives you an opportunity for the public to see, you know, as those mosquitoes are coming in, are we collecting a lot of mosquitoes and what's going on 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 your property specifically. So um, it's <clears throat> very important that the community is, is involved in this entire process. And I think that's why, you know, we've been so focused on and getting uh, feedback from the community. You know, starting uh, back in 2010, when we first started talking about the project to the local referendum in 2016. And then, um, you know, now going door to door, trying to engage with everybody and get a good idea of, of where these sites may be. So um, just it really is, a, is key to get um, all of you folks out there involved in this. And uh, we're just really excited to move forward with the pilot project. Thanks, Andrea. So we'll go ahead and start taking questions. Um, and you can enter your questions in the chat box. Um, nobody will see them but us, and we will not identify you. And, and we, we can start answering your questions. Um, okay, the first question is, we've already had a few come through. The first one is, how many people will be working for OxyTech in the Keys? Um, if Kevin were on, I would probably call on him, um, but he's not, I guess. So, okay, I might answer that question. And and Angela or Andrea, if if, if you wanna um, if you wanna pitch in, please do. But but we will have six technical staff. Um, we'll also have community engagement and compliance staff. And as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm temporarily relocating to, to the Keys as of, of January and, and really looking forward to, to being back in Florida. Okay, the next question. Um, I might take this too, but Andrea, I'll ask for your help. The question is, do you have enough sites in the Keys to place the boxes? And um, I think the answer is, is, is yes. It was definitely the most often asked question last week was, uh, can I have a box in, in my yard? And based on the level of support in the referendum in 2016 and the many conversations that we've had um, through our community engagement since, um, we, we, we do think there will be enough sites. Um, we, we, we think that we will not be able to accommodate all the all the requests to host boxes, but but we do want to receive those requests, and we can try to accommodate as as many as we can. Andrea, do do you have anything to add? Yeah, additionally, um, Aegean Egypti, like I said earlier, the population is important when selecting sites, and we do find that specific species uh, from Key West all the way to Key Largo. So. Um, we do have a number of different options as we're looking at site selection, which is why we're really focused on community engagement and trying to find um, the best sites. But, but yes, uh, it seems definitely that we will have enough sites to move forward with the pilot project. Thanks, Andrea. And, and that's something that, that we explain to, to people as, as we're just meeting with, with communities and the keys is, we're planning to go where we are most needed and wanted. And, and that's really a, a matrix of the 80s Egypti population and the support for the project. Okay, the next question, Andrea, this is definitely going to you. The question is to you, it says, Andrea, what kind of traps are used to monitor 80s Egypti populations? 
So the monitoring program for the pilot project is going to be really twofold. We'll be using BG Sentinel traps, which are specifically designed to collect um, Aedes aegypti. So uh, that's going to be the, the main use for monitoring the adult populations in the area. Um, additionally, we're going to be using uh, little black jars, uh, very scientific, but uh, they're used to collect um, Aedes aegypti mosquito eggs. So we'll be able to monitor uh, populations in, in those two different facets. Um, and they, they actually collect quite a few different things, which is, will be very interesting, I'm sure, as this moves forward. Great. Thanks, Andrea. OK, our next question, this question is for OxyTech, is when are you coming to Africa? And um, Kevin, I don't see you, but it looks like you, you may have rejoined us. Are you there? OK, maybe not. I, I can talk about this a little bit. Um, some of you may know that we have a partnership with the Gates Foundation, and some of that work um, will will bring us to to Africa. Um, I mean, likely in the next in the next year or two. Um, so this this is coming um, in, in the near term, and is absolutely on on our our radar. And um, and yeah, it's it's going to be a part of of Oxytech's work. Um, so I, I, I hope that I hope that helps. But um, I mean, we feel a real responsibility to get our technology to the 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 people who who need it the most. And um, I mean, you all just just saw in this in this virtual tour that that we showed the work that we are doing on the Anopheles mosquito, and that is a vector of of malaria, and. Um, and we are working on that so we can bring it to places like, like Africa. Okay, the next question, Angela, this is for you. It's um, how do you check that only males are produced? Thank you for this question. It's a very important question. Um, as you know, our Oxytech mosquitoes, they are, um, male only producing mosquitoes and we produce the mosquito eggs that will be released in the Florida Keys in the UK in the labs that you've seen in our video and every single egg batch that will be going to the Florida Keys will be controlled. They will, it will be subjected to a strict quality control program to make sure only male mosquitoes are being produced. Thank you Angela. The next question is for you too. And the question is, is it safe for staff to work in a facility producing female mosquitoes? So as you have seen, um, the facilities um, in the video, we have several levels of containment that um, separate, our, that contain our mosquitoes, not only from the outside, but also from our staff. So our mosquitoes, they are, as you saw, um, maintained in um, intact primary containers and staff who are handling mosquitoes, they wear protective equipment like the gloves that you have seen. So yes, it is safe for staff. Thank you, Angela. Okay, the next question, Andrea, this can go to you. Um, Will OxyTech and FKMCD staff be working side by side, or will OxyTech staff be the ones making the decisions? So we've really set up with this pilot project um, a, a collaboration. Um, FKMCD is involved every step of the way. We've got a steering committee that is both ourselves and OxyTech, where we you know, discuss and make decisions. And then um, all the way down to the field staff. Um, again, FKMCD employees will be uh, involved pretty much in every step of the way from uh, setting traps, collecting traps, going through um, identification. So we really, we really want to have a good handle on, on everything that happens in the pilot project. We've got great quality control that we're going to have set up. And then you know, overseeing everything, we'll have uh, the Florida Department of Agriculture 
We'll have the Environmental Protection Agency as well. I know the CDC is very interested in, um, you know, helping the oversight of the project. So there really are a lot of different levels to this, but um, we all want to be involved in, in every step as much as we can. Thank you, Andrea. Angela, the next question is for you. And the question is, are you looking at other mosquito species? And I think that that question means other than Aedes aegypti. Um, generally, in the context of our um, Oxitec programs, I think you've seen in, um, in the video, um, there was actually the mosquitoes that have been filmed in the video are not Aedes aegypti, they are um, Anopheles. So yes, we are looking at our mosquito species as well. Thank you, Angela. Okay, the next question, um, I, Angela, I think this one is, is a good question for you, but Andrea can answer it too. It's how do you keep mosquitoes from escaping your facilities? Because um, I mean, we're, we're both working with mosquitoes in our facilities. Can you start, I to start, Andrea, um, and then if you want to add anything. So um, we have several levels of containment to make sure we keep um, the mosquitoes within the facility. We have the first level, that is the cage that you've seen. Then we have a second level, that is the insectary. We have a third level, that is um, hallways or an outer insectary. So we use, usually have at least three levels of containment um, that a mosquito would need to have to pass to get to the outside. So um, usually our facilities in the Florida Keys, they will operate under arthropod containment levels guidance two. So meaning also we will have these three levels of containment. Thank you, Angela. Yeah, and, and just to echo that, um, like Angela said, we're going to follow all of the guidelines as far as containment goes for the facility here in, in Marathon. Um, every day for us, uh, we don't really necessarily worry about containment because the mosquitoes we're collecting um, are wild mosquitoes that are found you know, in the same area. So it's not something that we have to worry about um, on a normal basis here at the district. But we'll definitely follow all guidelines for containment when uh, going forward with the pilot project. Thank you both. Angela, the next question is also for you. The question is, could you tell us about the egg control protocols? Okay, so um, each egg batch that is being produced in the UK undergoes quality control testing before it is approved and released to be shipped um, to the Florida Keys for release. And as part of the quality control um, process, we confirm the functionality of our oxytic mosquitoes, meaning that only male mosquitoes survive. Thank you, Angela. The next, the next question is also for you. And um, there have actually been a couple of, of variations on, on this question. So it's, it's good that, that we're getting to it. It's, do you sort eggs? Or is it that females do not hatch? A very important question. So um, we do not sort eggs. I think technically that would be very, very difficult. Um, the technology, Oxitex technology, um, makes sure that only male mosquitoes survive. Um, females do hatch, but they die at a very, very early stage. Thank you, Angela. Um, okay, another question that I'll answer, but Andrea, if you want to add, it's, have you got many people saying yes to boxes? And I can say unequivocally, um, yes. Um, it really was the question that we received um, mo most often last week in the keys during all of our, our meetings and, and the presentations that, that we did is people are asking, well, what do I have to do to get a box in my yard? So, so we are hearing that and beyond the surveys that are being conducted already, we, we are going to um, launch a way for people to register their interests so that if our project ends up being in their neighborhood, we will know that they want a box or a trap. Um, and we, we wanna emphasize that hosting traps 
is also really important to support the project because that's how we monitor um, the mosquito population. And, and that's, that's also how we, we measure the, the success of our project. Um, Andrea, anything to add? No, I think just echoing that, um, I think we've heard enough folks that are interested in hosting one of these boxes that that's why we're, we're looking for a way for people to register uh, and that way we can keep track of all of these folks. So um, we're, we're excited. It seems that we've got some really great community support out there. Thanks, Andrea. Okay, Andrea, this question is for you too. It says, Andrea stated on US1 radio that, it says NCB, but I'm, this, I think this means FKNCD, like your mosquito control district has previously released mosquitoes. Which mosquitoes was Andrea referring to? Um, the only releases that we've done so far in the Keys were in, back in 2017, and that was with the Wabaki infected male. Uh, it was a very small trial and we got uh, very promising results out of it. Um, and we're actually still waiting for product registration. That's next for those Wabakia infected male mosquitoes, um, but completely different projects. Again, great results and continuing to look at that technology as well as we're moving forward. Thanks, Andrea. Okay, um, Angela, this next question is for you. And the question is, how long does the modified gene stay in the population after release? Can it or does it persist? The answer is it does not persist. Um, the oxyhic males that we release, they contain two copies of this gene. And as they mate with wild type females, they pass on one copy of this gene to the offspring. So, um, the gene decreases with every generation by 50%. But again, it's important to remember only males survive, females do not survive. Thank you, Angela. Okay, this next question, it's, it's for you too, and it's somewhat related. It says, how long do males survive after being released? Um, that depends on many different factors. Um, environmental conditions, um, access to food and water, um, but they generally survive a couple of days. Thank you, Angela. And I mean, that, that's just another thing to add, you know, um, about the way that our technology works today is these mosquitoes are releasing themselves. I mean, they decide when it's best to come out. So it's, it's different from the previous generation where we we were releasing, I mean, we had factories and we were rearing these mosquitoes to adulthood and we were releasing these, these live mosquitoes our, ourselves. And we're really proud of this innovation that allows us to put eggs in a box and just add water. And then these mosquitoes come out, um, you know, when, when the time is right for, for them. Um, this innovation makes the technology extremely accessible and scalable. And people ask um, us sometimes for video footage of the mosquitoes coming out of our boxes. And we have that. Uh, and it's very boring to watch because one flies out and then later another one flies out. They come out when, when they're ready. And, um, and it's, it's really an advantage or an efficiency of, of, of this, this process. Okay, the next question, I can respond to this one. It's how are the projects received in Brazil by the public? Um, just to give background for those of you who are, are not as familiar with the history of OxyTech and our work in Brazil, our first releases there were, I believe almost 11 years ago. So we've been releasing in Brazil for a decade. And the public support there is, is very strong. Um, I mean, we conduct surveys before, during, after our projects, and the levels of support are over 90% always. Um, you know, if we ask, well, do you want the project to continue? Would you like for the project to be expanded? Um, so very high levels of community support. 
And I mean, you all know that in some geographies, um, we we call our mosquitoes the friendly mosquitoes, and it's it's the Brazilians that um, I mean, the Panamanians said it too. So this has been said in several languages that um, well, they're the friendly mosquitoes, and then also in Indiatuba, they are calling our mosquitoes heroes, um, but but very well received. And um, yeah, I mean, if there are other questions, we can we can respond to them. Um, but but we're very we're very proud of our work in Brazil and in the public support for it. This next question, Angela, this is for you. It's wait, for for how long does each box release male mosquitoes? So as you mentioned before, um, Meredith, um, the mosquitoes they exit the box when they are ready. So it's not that we release them all at once. They gradually exit the box as they are ready. So um, they are released over a period of one to two weeks. Thank you, Angela. And um, I, I guess, I, I wonder if it would be helpful to explain a little bit about what happens after, after that. Oh yeah, absolutely. So um, as you imagine, um, the males, they emerge um, when they are ready to fly away. They um, emerge from the box um, and by biological instinct, they search for wild type females. So um, it's really a super targeted solution. They search for Aedes aegypti females uh, and mate with them. That is their biological function. And all the offspring will carry the oxidic gene, meaning all fe no females will survive. And then the, the boxes, you know, and I'd like to learn this for myself because, um, you know, I think it's a little bit different now. I mean, when, when those mosquitoes have released themselves, the, the boxes are, are reusable and they can be refilled um, with, with eggs and water. Is that right? Absolutely. Yes, they are reusable. Great. Thank you, Angela. And okay. The next question, Andrea, this this will go to you because I know it's mostly your team that has started that has started this so far. The question is, where are the surveys that will be held in the Florida project? I guess I guess they're asking where have I mean we're going to be doing surveys throughout the Keys um, fairly continuously, but I guess the question is, yeah, we. No, well, no, okay, maybe the question is, what are the surveys that will be held in the Florida project? But if you could just talk a little bit about where some surveying has been done and, and what the surveys entail, I think that would be, I think that would be helpful. Sure. Um, we've recently launched an, an effort to collect some really good information, um, mainly on communication, um, if people know about the project, if they need more information, just so we get a good idea on how to get information to folks that are out there. Um, and this survey is going to be taking place from Key Largo down to Key West. Um, it's something that our inspectors are going to be collecting. And um, it's just a really quick, I think, six or seven questions, um, just really to find out how best to communicate with people. Um, do people need more information? What's the best way to get that information? And it really is just kind of the start of uh, the multiple surveys that we're going to be doing throughout this project. Um, but like I said, this first one, we, we're going to go through uh, Key West all the way to Key Largo. Just how can we reach people? Uh, what's the best way? So that's that currently started this week, and we'll be doing uh, this survey specifically, I think, probably for the next at least four weeks. Great. Thanks, Andrea. Next question, Angela, this is for you, is what is the fitness of males compared to wild ones? So I guess the question is, what is the fitness of Oxytec males compared to the in invasive um, mosquitoes? Um, so a fitness check is also one of our um, quality control parameters that we evaluate from time to time. And um, Oxitec males are fully comparable to wild type males when it comes to attractiveness to wild type females. Thank you, Angela. And I, I think we are, 
Well, this is unusual. We might be running out of questions. Well, now here, I, I see some other questions that we can ask. Um, Angela, I think this one would go to you. It uh, says, the parents of the release mosquitoes are also GM. How are generations maintained? Okay, I think if I understood that correctly, um, there are two questions in here. Right. Um, so one, if I understood correctly, how are generations maintained of um, our mosquitoes? Um, maybe in a lab context, did I understand it correctly? I think so. Okay, good. Um, so our um, oxidic mosquitoes, they carry this self-limiting gene that allows only males to survive. So this is an excellent question. Um, there is a dietary supplement that we um, can give in the lab to our, and that we do give in the lab to our mosquitoes that allows um, females to survive under lab conditions only. So um, this allows us to rear um, mosquitoes in the lab and produce more mosquito eggs. Thank you, Angela. And I encourage you all, if you have questions, to submit them. We have just a few more here. Um, I'm looking at them. I'm making sure we haven't missed anything. Oh, okay, Angela, this is a good one for you. It says, could, I mean, we, we've gotten several variations of this question that are similar about the red fluorescent marker. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, could you explain about the marker for this strain and how it compares to 513A? And 513A, just for those of you watching, was our, our first generation of this technology, and we're now working with our second generation. Okay, so the fluorescent marker is um, integrated in our um, Oxitec mosquitoes. So all Oxitec mosquitoes carry the fluorescent marker and um, the, the um, 5034 mosquitoes, they have a very strong fluorescent marker. So it's really bright red throughout the mosquitoes. It's best seen uh, in larvae. Okay. Thank you, Angela. Um, the ne this next question, I, I'm a little hesitant to repeat it because, because sometimes we get questions that are not accurate about our technology. But Angela, I think it would be helpful to explain this. The, the question is, will the impregnated females have an opportunity to bite humans after being impregnated with GM material? Could you just explain that a little bit, please, Angela? Of course. Maybe let me break that down a little bit. So as I said before, our oxidic mosquitoes, the males that emerge from the box, they follow their biological function. They find females um, to mate with them. Um, these are wild type females um, yeah, that, that we find out in the wild. And um, these wild type females, they of course also fulfill their um, biological function, which is um, they will lay eggs. Um, to continue the, the population. Um, the the, any wild type females that are out there, they could have the opportunity to um, bite someone. Thank you, Angela. Okay, the next question is for you also. And it says, will the eggs for Florida come from the UK or Brazil facility? And how are they shipped and moved safely? Mm -hmm. A very good question. So the eggs for Florida come from the UK only. So that is, um, if you think of our video, the first part of the video, the first facility that you have seen, um, the eggs come from there. Um, and I mentioned before that our eggs are kept in several levels of containment. Um, and this is also true for eggs that are being shipped. So in order to make sure they arrive safely, they are um, packed in three layers of um, shatterproof containment. Great, thank you, Angela. The next question I'm gonna send to you too. I just I just saw it in the chat. It's um, can you elaborate about what will help determine the number of OxyTech mosquitoes released? Um, so we um, know how many eggs are being released in our boxes, 
And um, from the number of eggs, we know the number of individuals. Okay, and um, I guess, and and I guess we've talked about before just the proportionality of of the invasive population, and then our our releases are are relative to to the pop population of the invasive mosquito in the environment where we are releasing. Okay, thank you. Um, this next question is definitely for you too, Angela. Is there a person who is looking at eggs all day? Um, no, there is not a person who is looking at eggs all day. Um, as I said before, our quality program um, does not require that we need to screen each individual egg under the microscope, for example. Um, our quality control program tests the functionality. So um, it tests eggs to make sure um, no females survive. Great. Thank you, Angela. Um, Andrea, I think this next question is a good one for you. The question is, were there lots of modifications required to make the Florida facility suitable? Um, I wouldn't say a lot of modifications, but we did outfit a couple of different rooms here in the Marathon facility to ensure that we had proper containment. Um, and those were actually done, I want to say back in 2015 or 16, um, because the regulatory authorities wanted to make sure that we had what we needed here prior to any sort of approval. So um, we wanted to, we made sure that, you know, we had proper containment, that uh, there were at least a couple different layers before you can get to the outside um, and, and just make sure that we had everything we needed here. Uh, to make the regulatory authorities uh, happy with what we did. Thank you, Andrea. Oh, okay, this is a good question. Um, well, and actually probably both you, Andrea, and Anna Angela m might be able to contribute. It's, can you elaborate on the role the traps play in this operation? This is important. We focus on the boxes a lot, but the traps are really important too. That question continues. So the first part is, can you elaborate on the role the traps play in this operation? The second part, do they help you keep track of the flight range of the Oxytech mosquitoes? Okay, I can um, make a start and then Andrea, if you want to continue. So um, the traps, they um, have several purposes. Um, they help us to monitor exactly as um, the question asks. Um, they help us to monitor the flight range of the mosquitoes, but they also help us to understand um, the offspring. So um, in our, after the boxes um, are released, our oxytech males um, emerge and they mate. And um, we use traps to monitor um, oxytech offspring in the mosquito population. So the traps will help us not only to understand the flight range of the mosquitoes, but also the performance of the oxytic mosquitoes. Thank you, Angela. Right. And just to, yeah, just to elaborate a little bit, um, remember this pilot project is really two, two projects, um, what we're calling A and B. And the first project itself really is to figure out the flight range of these Oxitec mosquitoes. So um, that we're, we're really accomplishing quite a bit over this next summer and starting with flight range, moving into that monitoring phase and, and really understanding the impact that Oxitec males will have on uh, our wild population. Thanks very much, Angela and Andrea. Okay, the next question, Angela, I think this is best for you. What are the most difficult stages to produce this new mosquito in the laboratory? I have to say our entire production process is um, covered by, um, by clearly defined standard operating procedures. So it's a really well-defined production process. And for that reason, um, I have to think very hard, but um, there's not really um, any very difficult stage because everything has been very well defined and everything is performed under tightly controlled conditions. Thank you, Angela. Um, the next question, I think it would be good to answer this just to ex explain how our operations work. The question is, 
is there any usual or better place to put the box into a residential building? Um, I mean, I, I think we don't usually put the, these boxes inside a building, so we can talk about that. But this question continues. It's, I'm thinking about how these mosquitoes could survive instead of die. And I guess the concern is that the mosquitoes could be killed by people before they achieve their, their goal. I think the best person to answer this question would be Kevin. Okay. But, um, yeah. Well, I, I guess one thing that I can add, I mean, we talk about people hosting boxes. We, we do not put our boxes inside of people's homes. Um, they are outside. Um, so I don't think there's a, a circumstance where you would necessarily have these boxes inside of a residential building. They're, they're outside. And one of the reasons our community engagement is so important is to raise awareness, you know, like the communities understand in, in Brazil, that our mosquitoes that we release, like all male mosquitoes, do not bite. Um, so you, you want those mosquitoes around because they're not going to bite you and they are going to help reduce the population of the invasive disease spreading and biting, um, you know, the, the female Aedes aegypti. Um, so I, I hope that responds to, to, to the question, but these boxes are, they are outside. Um, I think that may be it. I mean, we are prioritizing questions on topic, you know, related to the facilities, um, especially. So we've got just about four minutes left. I may go ahead and, and wrap it up um, unless there's anything else. Okay. Well, okay. Now we, we, we do have another one. We'll, we'll go to time if, if, if questions that are on topic keep coming. Um, but this one says, considering that mosquitoes can can be wind assisted, how do you monitor the modified mosquitoes from getting to neighborhoods not involved in the trials? Could, could you speak about that, Angela? Um, yes, uh, I will answer to that. So um, we briefly touched on traps before and um, traps are um, our key tool to monitor um, the distribution of the mosquitoes. Great, thank you, Angela. The next question, and, and I did hear this question um, la last week some too, uh, are there a large number of Aedes aegypti in the Florida Keys relative to other species? I think people are curious about that. And Andrea, you may you may wanna talk about this. I mean, you're there all the time. You're very familiar with, with which mosquitoes are, are in the Florida Keys. And why not, says, why not go after a species with a larger pop? So looking at all of our mosquito collections, um, Aedes aegypti are a very small percentage of the total number of mosquitoes that we have in the Florida Keys. Um, however, that one mosquito species is re responsible for um, what we consider our major public health threats, which um, are dengue fever, Zika, chikungunya, um, yellow fever, We've seen dengue outbreaks here in the Florida Keys now on a couple of different occasions. And even though the population is relatively low in comparison, um, it's high enough for those disease, disease transmissions to occur. So we're really focused on doing our best to control uh, that disease spreading mosquito species specifically. Um, while again, it only makes up between one and 4% of our mosquito population, um, it's, it's definitely our biggest concern down here when it comes to human health. Thanks very much, Andrea. And before I go to our last slide, just to say thank you and close, um, just want to remind everybody, if you have questions even after tonight, send them to florida at oxytech.com. We will answer your questions. Um, and then we will post the recording of, of this webinar, all the materials used, all, all questions asked,
with answers and links to external resources. Those will be posted on our keysmosquitoproject.com page and also the oxytech.com forward slash Florida. But just want to make sure everybody has a chance to record those resources. Um, we definitely want to hear from you and we, we want you to, to, to follow what we're doing. And um, yeah, with, with that, we'll just say thank you and, and good night. Hope you join us next month.